Good afternoon guys. I hope we're all sparkly. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic. Hair loss on testosterone replacement therapy. Is it an important subject? I don't think so. But apparently I am not in touch with a modern man. I'm okay with not being in touch with a modern man. But let's address the topic anyway, because apparently some of you are a bit worried about it. Hair. Oh, I remember the days. I also still get out of the shower and go, not realising I do not have my silky locks. I did realise it was time to cut my hair off when I was sat in a pub chatting this lass up talking about conditioners it had to go <laughs> oh that was a mistake <laughs> do i care about hair loss no why because i think a man should be judged by his actions not how pretty he looks we live in such a superficial bloody world where we're judged on appearance and not our character. It goes... Oh. Anyway, so is hair loss on testosterone replacement therapy a legitimate concern? Well, possibly, but I will say this, and this should be the end of the video. If you go bald on a well-balanced TRT protocol, you were supposed to go bald. Why? Because dihydrotestosterone, DHT, one of the metabolites of testosterone, which causes male pattern baldness if in excess, is never elevated on a well-balanced TRT protocol. So if you go bald, you were supposed to go bald. That is the fact. That is the truth of the matter. So, you present with low testosterone. The cardinal symptoms, low mood, anxiety, lack of energy, low libido, brain fog. You have a confirmed deficiency and what is preventing you from going on TRT? Concerns about hair loss? Really? So your self-confidence, your self-esteem comes from having a Vidal Sassoon head of hair? Give me a break. Perhaps it's your low testosterone, your low self-esteem that arises as a result of having low testosterone that is making you think this way. Men who spend more time in front of the mirror than their missus are not men. Did I have any reservations about shaving my hair off? No. I was going bald. It was not attractive. Is it attractive now? I couldn't care less. But go bald, it'll increase your squat by 10%. Grow a dodgy beard, 15%. Now I've never been a particularly hairy man, if you want to know. <laughs> I've never been able to grow a full beard. And I still really can't. Some of my guys, they walk in with Viking beards, big muscles, and they say, I went to my doctor, I presented with all the negative symptoms, I had confirmatory blood tests, and my doctor, stroke N NHS endocrinologist, said, look at this, look at your muscles, you don't have low testosterone. Well, I do have all the symptoms and I have low testosterone according to the blood test. Well, it's within range. So 
I don't think you need testosterone replacement therapy. So, on your bike. How incredibly disappointing is that? An NHS endocrinologist is judging you on your appearance. He is making a, an objective assessment on your long-term well-being based on the fact you have a Viking beard and muscles. Wow. Scary stuff, isn't it? But there is a hesitation, reservation to prescribe testosterone replacement therapy because testosterone is seen as a hormone that we only need for muscles and a bit of nookie. We don't realise it's integral to your overall health. Now this misassociation is not going to change with the bozos who promote testosterone as a lifestyle drug. Everybody should be on testosterone replacement therapy. No, you should only be on testosterone replacement therapy if you have a confirmed deficiency. Efficient attempts to address your lifestyle, your diet and your physical exercise to improve your overall health. Because if you go on testosterone replacement therapy, you're going to still have to look after those aspects of your health that you've potentially neglected in the past. Now, does being a chunky monkey preclude you from being a candidate for TRT? Should you lose that 20 kilos before being considered for TRT? Lots of guys have obviously tried to lose weight and they haven't been able to lose weight because they've got low testosterone. So it's chicken and egg. Should you be denied testosterone because you need to make some, albeit necessary, adjustments to your lifestyle, diet and uh, exercise? You see, it gets a little bit complicated, doesn't it? But the premise behind testosterone replacement therapy should be normalising your male androgen levels to help you lead a productive, active life. We should always be acting in the best interest of the patient. We should be providing them with a sense of perspective that is lost. So whenever I start somebody on TRT, I honestly believe it's in their best interests. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. So you might qualify for TRT, but is it in your best interests? And that's the only way you can make that decision is through a face-to-face -face consultation with somebody that can provide you with a little bit of objectivity. The hair loss thing. Now, I've obviously trivialised it and I apologise for trivialising it, but I do think it's a trivial uh, side effect when you think about the primary goals of what we're trying to achieve here. Mental health is your wealth. Energy. A healthy libido. Healthy body, healthy mind. Matter over mind. If you are truly concerned about hair loss, and that is stopping you from going on TRT, you really do need to have a step back. I'd say look in the mirror, but don't look in the mirror because you'll see your hair and go. <laughs> Take a step back and think, have I actually really got testosterone deficiency? Because if all those incredibly important aspects of my life are less important than a full head of hair, I really do need to reassess my priorities because if you go bald on testosterone replacement therapy, you're supposed to go bald. It's in the genes. That you can do to delay going bald, lead a healthy lifestyle, reduce stress. That's a big one. A healthy diet, 
full of micronutrients. Um, you can use minoxidil. Do you remember that Simpsons episode when you used minoxidil? So that's a topical vasodilator. Give you good scalp, a good massage as well. That can improve matters. The one thing I would say for you not to do in under any circumstance is use finasteride, both orally and topically. Just Google post finasteride syndrome. Guys that have used finasteride who come to the clinic and go on testosterone replacement therapy, they often don't see the same positive results that men who have not used finasteride get with a healthy melandrin profile. Now, obviously, we believe it's due to DHT. We have tried using Proviron to improve their sense of well-being, and it's had very mixed responses because, again, life is complicated at times. And who complicates it? We do. Keep it simple. Keep it safe. Stay golden, pony boy.